let's start out with a comparison between the typical bassline written from a guitarist's perspective versus one by a bassist. So what's actually happening in these two examples? Well, everything is the same in terms of the arrangement. The only thing I've changed is the bassline itself, and more specifically, the groove of said bassline. The first example was the original bass I recorded years ago, and the second was something I came up with recently after putting into practice everything that I'll be covering in this video. Example one is made up of a typical root note bass part. It's something that's similar to what I often hear in songs that get sent my way to review. These can sound great, but I usually feel like they're almost done as an afterthought to the rest of the composition. And I say this because that's exactly how I used to think of my own bass lines too. I spend all my time trying to come up with the catchiest riff or the most technical chord progression, then once it came to writing a bass line, I'd default to this kind of thing because that's what usually works, right? But this was coming from my background of first learning guitar, so my approach to playing bass was almost entirely informed by this. Yet the more and more I started to pick apart my favourite songs, the more I noticed how the bass really served an entirely different role to that of the guitars. That my tongue is tied off My brain's repeat And just to stress this point before we move on, I'm in no way saying that root notes or just simple bass lines in general are bad. They're great and will never ruin the song, but I think that by not fully exploring everything else you can do with a bass guitar, you're really underserving your own song. If you're like me and started out on guitar first, it can often be a difficult concept to grasp. The instruments basically look and feel the same to play, and the only big difference is that a bass has a longer neck and thicker strings, right? And I think that this is part of where the issue stems from, as it's very easy to transition from playing guitar to playing bass, so naturally, you will approach playing each instrument in the same way. There's no real physical or visual difference between the two, whereas going from, say, a guitar to a piano can feel quite alien. So what are the key differences between these two instruments? Well, to me, the main two things I always consider when writing bass lines is, one, how my bass line interacts with the drums, and specifically, the kick and snare pattern, and two, the sustain of each bass note, as in how long you hold the notes for, where these fall on the grid, and how to best shape the transient of each note with either your finger or pick. Tone would also be a third factor, because the actual sound of a bass can also massively impact the part that's being played. So let's explore these main two ideas first. Starting with the bass and drum relationship, like I mentioned earlier, I think a lot of beginners will often build their bass lines out of what the guitar is playing, whether that's a root note of each chord, or the strumming pattern that the guitarist is using. And again, while this is by no means incorrect, I think that the instrument you should focus more on is the drums. Bass and drums are, for the most part, the backbone of every song. Together, they really shape the overall feel and rhythm of a composition, and depending on what's being played, they can really alter the feeling of any song section. Take my example from earlier, if you listen to the way the bass and drums are interacting. Example 2 sounds like it has way more bounce and feel, because the bass line is helping to reinforce the groove of the drum pattern. The drum part almost feels more alive, even though I'm using the exact same pattern in each example. Whereas example 1 sounds more laid back, and the drums feel like they're being pushed more into the background, simply because the bass is playing on top of the drums at all times. One isn't necessarily better than the other, it's just about finding the part that best serves your song. So I'm going to show you this idea visually, using a mini bass, as this is a really easy way to better grasp this concept. The notes you're seeing in blue I've copied from my drum pattern, which is also MIDI. Visually, you can see how in example 2, I've really built the bass line from the drum groove. This part is really simple, and it's just bouncing back and forth from the root note to the fifth. So nothing fancy is happening from a technical sense. The key thing here is the placement of each note, and figuring out when or when not to place your bass notes on the kick or snare. So at the start, you can see that I'm mirroring the kick and snare pattern. The first note it's playing a D sharp, which then goes to an A sharp, which is a perfect fifth above D sharp, i.e. what you probably know as a power chord. Then we have two more kicks, so I'm going back to the root note and then dropping down to the C sharp, 
which is the next root note in my chord progression. And then again, the next time the snare hits, I'm going to the fifth note of the C sharp, which is G sharp. Now that this pattern of shifting from root notes on the kick to fifths on the snare has been repeated, I'm subverting it here in the third bar by playing F sharp in this case on the kick. And then I've added this little passing note change, which falls on the next snare hit before going back to the kick for the next root note chord change. In this very last section, I'm still following the kick and snare pattern, but again slightly subverting the first two bars by having the fifth note fall on the kick here instead of the snare. I didn't create this bass line by simply copy and pasting the kick and snare and then adjusting the notes to fit the key of my song, but that also wouldn't be a bad idea to use. Instead, I like to solo out the drums and bass and really lock these two elements together to build a solid foundation for the rest of my track. It just so happened that in this case, I like the way that things sounded when the bass and drums mirrored each other in this way. It's one reason I really like creating my bass lines with MIDI first, because it helps you test out all of these ideas, then you can always go back and record a real bass if you so wish. So that's what I mean by following the drums. Like I said, this is a technique of mirroring, but that's just one idea. You can also do the opposite of this and play in between where the kick and snares fall, and create a completely different feeling out of those same notes. That example is more like a syncopated pattern where the bass line is emphasizing some of the weaker beats and you get this cool push and pull effect when you juxtapose this with the drums. I tend to find more use for the first technique when working on the music that I regularly produce, but again, it's entirely down to your preference and what best serves your song. So now let's talk about the sustain of the bass. You've actually been listening to that idea for all of these previous examples too. What I mean by the sustain is how long you choose to hold out each of these notes for and where these fall within the grid. So playing short staccato-like notes will completely change the feeling of the rhythm as opposed to holding long drawn out notes. And it's getting a feel for when and where to change these up that's really the key to locking in with your drum pattern. So let's go back to the MIDI and I'll first make each note sustain until the preceding chord changes, which sounds like this. This sounds pretty cool already, but if we alter the length of specific notes, you can really emphasize the groove that's being made up by the bass and drums working together. So in this case, I'm cutting some of the notes down by 1 16th, and that very slight drop in the low end really helps to make the preceding drum hit sound that much more impactful. And then when we go to the third chord change, I've cut this even shorter, so it's only being held out for the duration of 1 8th note. And this gives the groove quite an abrupt sound, because your ears have been used to the more drawn out notes that came before up until this point. I also did this towards the end of the fourth bar, which then leads us into the repeated section. I'll play these back to back so you can really get a feel for how each technique can alter the overall groove of your song. So now that you've got your drums and bass locked in, find out how you can write catchy leads over top of this in this next video. 